The following is a presentation of TFNN. The TFNN Bull Bear Trading Hour. Every trading day, live at 10 a.m. Eastern. Call now, toll free at 877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. The TFNN Bull Bear Trading Hour. Now, Tom and Tommy O'Brien. Welcome, folks. Appreciate your growl and a problem with us out here. We have the Dow Industrials up 228, NASDAQ up 83, S&P's up 25, uh, S&P's, uh, NASDAQ, uh, new all-time highs. We're going to have to get the recording going, man. Every day, new record highs in the S&P coming at you. And we got window dressing happening, folks. So uh, November 1st, happy November, um, no doubt. Gold, gold down at $1.30, trading at fifteen thirteen. Now, uh, we'll get into gold, but, but gold is actually pushing the swing point with volume. Our bottom line is that jobs number come out. Gold uh, went down about 7 or $8, rejected lower price. Now you're pushing into the swing from yesterday. And you're going to have volume. Silver, silver's down a penny, trading at 18.05. You get light sweet crude up 84, 55.01. And notes and bonds, notes and bonds, folks, uh, had monster volume yesterday. Um, we'll see what they're doing today, but they're only down three ticks on the 10 year at 130.06. The 30 is off six at 161.06. And King Dollar, King Dollar's down 103 ticks, 97.245. Euro's at 111. The yen is at 108, and the pound is at 129 to 1 U.S. dollar. And if I can pull up the chart of the 10-year, because uh, jumping around, pretty muted response, man, on, on a market pop for sure, right? You know, yeah. we saw some action in gold. You did see a move on the jobs number where you went from about 1.67 to 1.71, right? but we're right back under 1.7 right now. We're getting a little bit of volatility right now as well. I think we just got an ISM number coming out as well at 10 o'clock. Let's jump over to that because that's hitting that market as well. And are we there yet? There we go. Factory gauge. Let's see what we got going on here because this one just popped at 10 o'clock, I believe. So we get U.S. manufacturing trailed estimates for October signaled the sector contracted for a third straight month. ISM measure increases by less than forecast to 48.3 from a 10-year low of 47.8. As we discussed uh, last month, anything under 50, right, is a right. contraction. So for the third straight month, you got a contraction, and that's where you did see a little bit of volatility right on 10 o'clock. We'll jump back to that yield. Um, I guess I jumped away, but pretty muted response, especially, as you said, man. It, it's, it's amazing that the S&Ps are up 24 in the bond market won't pull back yeah and there's your gold reaction as you said so we get the jobs number markets spike higher instantly yeah. as you would expect gold pulls back on that news um but boom just like that man gold and you actually made it up to 15 18 um before we've pulled back but right literally to the dollar right where we we're trading yeah. at before that jobs number and if you watch this folks it's gonna be pretty cool especially for friday i mean you're gonna i, th I believe we're over two hundred thousand contracts already um yeah, you're 227. Okay. So when you take a look at this, what you're going to see out here is that the we got an expansion of volume yesterday. Stopped pushing yesterday with uh, 390. And it has a chance to do that today, too. Definitely. You know, at 227, 10 o'clock in the morning. You know. Hey, Jobs Friday, man. That's a big day. Oh, yeah. Always. Once, you know, once a month. We only get 12 of them a year, to right. be you know, to I mean, be fair. Yeah. That's still saying gold wants to go to its uh, highs out here from uh, September, which is a 1566. So big number. We're Definitely. We're going to take a look at the... Third, the 10 year first, this is like, <laughs> I feel like the Groundhog Day say the same thing every day, but it's like once these bonds and notes stop moving higher again, I mean, look at the 2.2 the million contracts, folks, we did yesterday, you know? Yeah, and a lot of trade news yesterday, right? I mean, the idea that, oh, yeah. the, idea that the Chinese don't, have any interest in budging and that the phase one deal may be the best it might get is a scary notion for the market. Um, I don't know why that would be a surprise notion for the market, I, but if that becomes a reality, um, you know, because a phase one I heard on Bloomberg, one somebody saying today, phase one of that deal is kind of like a truce, okay? They're gonna buy some right. soybeans, they're, they're gonna roll back maybe some of the tariffs in October, they're not gonna maybe put in some of them in December. That's not a comprehensive trade deal, all right? No. It's barely a phase no. one. It's kind of like, let's calm things down, and try and get a trade deal. That's right. what you could call it. Right. And if the news is nothing else is going to happen, then there better be some fear. But guess what, man? The market keeps chugging along with 125,000 jobs at it, 128. Yep. 
And the number I found most interesting in there is that you had 41,000, I believe, in automakers that they lost. You had 20,000 in the census that they lost. There's 60,000 alone. Get added those to the 120. You're at 185 again, man. Right. I mean, huge numbers. Right. You get Apple uh, up 367. I mean, that's, you know, we'll see how far away it can pull away from, you know, this little congestion up here. I mean, yesterday, further, some volatility yeah. not on that yeah. trade deal for sure. No, totally. But the, they the further you pull away from that 249, it's, yeah. you know, the higher you, you can get. Fitbit, right? So yeah. Google. Jumping from Apple to Google to Alphabet. Yeah. So, $2.1 billion for Fitbit. Not a bad price. Fitbit. Um, can you go for a long term? Uh, we'll pull up on yeah, them. So I just want to see what it went public for first. Okay. Because they've had some real volatility, man. They were a high flyer for a while. They really pulled back for a while. Yeah, exactly. That's why I wanted to wow. see their long term chart. Look can we that. go into it? Because check this out, right? And they, they were almost ahead of wearables. They really yes, were. I right. mean, they were before the iWatch. Yep. Okay. They were before any of that stuff. Um, and I'm just going to put this on like a weekly five year. They've been around even that long. Yeah, this is what I thought. Let's back it up even more. Ten year. Yeah, so so they came out of the gate fast, man. They went, what did you say, 20, 29 was the issue somewhere around there. Shot up to 50 bucks in no time. And that is in August of 2015. And then you could really say that since November of 16, you were at $8 and you've been fighting. But coming into today, you were at $6.00 and maybe 10 cents and there was already speculation of this so okay. to bring it down even further let's just put it on like a three-month daily because yeah oh, this was the that. first time the, the news broke that google was considering buying them um so it went from four dollars and 28 cents up to six bucks they're coming in at 714 but to put it in context they're still only at this price valued at 1.845 billion the price tag on that bio 2.1 billion yeah so and if it comes through there'll be higher price tags to pay and the people that have bought it uh, took quite a beating on, yeah uh, i mean you're going back so long ago hopefully if anybody was in there they they had realized that money was gone you know it's not like uh you're 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 a long-term holder in a company like apple you'll make it back probably you're a long-term holder of a company like disney you're a long-term holder in this company you better have realized that might go to zero and google almost getting quite a discount man for two billion dollars i wonder how they're gonna um yeah I, position that within exactly. you know it's all about wearables i right. said to you up in the office when we were chatting about it before the program they don't have an iWatch, Google. Maybe they do. I'm not aware of it, right? right? They don't have anything like that. So right. maybe they're going to try and bring that into their ecosystem in that way because wearables is just the future of everything, man. You know, I don't have an iWatch yet, but I, I would like to get one at some point because right. it's pretty cool. You know, you get your, your heart rate. You got your, I think they're going to be able to do the blood sugar for, for everything. Right. Yeah. Without doing anything, just having it on. Just having it on. Right, right, right. right. So Artisa, Art. Arista, I believe. Arista Networks. Now, this is a uh, cloud networking oh, solution boy. data center. This is a getting smoked. I mean, this is down $62. You're trading at $182. And this and Pinterest are the, are the biggest uh, downdrafts out here. So Okay. 25% haircut overnight, man. And That's, look at it. It's been haircuts on us. Yeah. Um, Looks like they came out with the tough earnings uh, the last two quarters prior to this yeah. one. And maybe, you know, what did it start? Yeah, in April and then in June or July. That's the high of 331. One. Man, you know, if you're in cloud, you're competing with Amazon, yep. Microsoft, Google. and Google. <laughs> Stay right there, folks. Tommy and I are coming right back. Our phone number is 877-927-6648. We have the Dow 227. NASDAQ up to 78. S&P's up 25. We'll come right back. If you're not currently using the TAS Profile Scanner when looking at setting up your trading opportunities, then your arsenal is short a mighty weapon. The TAS Profile Scanner is a standalone piece of software that instantly filters over 2,500 global financial markets such as stocks, ETFs, commodity futures, and Forex. Headed by Steve Dahl, Taz understands that in today's technological world, the use of top flight software applications and technical analysis expertise is essential to successful trading in today's market. You also gain access to the webinar that Steve Dahl and Tom O'Brien just hosted, The Best Way to Use the Taz Profile Scanner to Profit. This webinar archive is available for all subscribers immediately upon signing up. All new subscriptions also come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to risk. 
Start your subscription by visiting the front page of TFNN.com today and you'll find the TAS Profile Scanner under the Services tab. Sign up today. Are you in the market for buying or selling real estate in the Bay Area, including the surrounding St. Petersburg, Tampa, and Clearwater markets? Tiger Real Estate LLC is a firm that has extensive experience in the Tampa Bay Area. Whether you're looking to sell your current property for maximum value or you're in the market for a second home or investment property, Tiger Realty has the experience across all areas of real estate in the Tampa Bay area to help buyers and sellers make the most informed decisions across all price levels. From the price you should be paying per square foot in certain up-and-coming areas to the type of cash flow investment properties are capable of creating, Tiger Real Estate can help you make the best decision when it comes to all areas of the market. Before you make one of the biggest decisions of your financial future, call Tiger Real Estate L. LC today at 727-329-8322 or email us at tiger at tfnn.com. That's 727-329-8322. Call us today. Many of our new listeners have heard about The Tiger's Den. The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information in a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of the TFNN shows, plus see all of the charts as they happen live and have access to archives of all of those charts. You can test drive The Tiger's Den absolutely free for 30 days and greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets and how to make your money work for you. Details on The Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN has launched our brand new website. You can still visit us at the same TFNN.com URL, but when you do, you'll see a new and improved homepage with a much simpler navigation, whether you're watching Tiger TV live in high definition or just accessing your newsletter subscriptions. We even have new pricing in six months and yearly options. Check out the new TFNN.com now and experience all the upgrades. TFNN.com, educating investors. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Welcome back, folks. Uh, Dow. Dow is up 229. Nasdaq is up uh, 60, 77. S&Ps are up 24. Uh, they, no doubt, are at uh, all-time highs. Let's go take a look in, inside the NDX 100, the strength versus the weakness in here. We have um, Skyworks. Skyworks up 6.8%. That's okay. an Apple supplier. Myelin Pharmaceutical up 3.7. You got um, Walgreen Boots up 2.8%. Uh, taken away from it, Mercado Libre is down 3.3. Starbucks is off 1.4. Bookings.com is down 1. It's not bad. You know, there's, uh, nothing really sticks out there in a large way. We'll get to Pinterest in a second, but that's uh, Pinterest is a, is a mess. There's no yes. doubt about that. Uh, inside the Dow, the move is inside the Dow. You got, uh, yeah, look at Apple sticking up there. Apple's putting 25 positive points. Goldman, 24. Bowling, Bowling 23. Taken away from it, Big Mac. That's it. Uh, yeah, it's the only stock down more than a dollar. Yeah, minus 16. Yeah. And if we go over to Pinterest, then we see what's going on here. Oh, boy. These, uh... Always some winners and losers come earnings season. Oof. Pinterest looks to be one of the losers, man, for sure. Oh, would it just pop out here again? It was right up there. Oh, that's was just... it? Oh, I see what's going on. I got the Dow. There we go. Versus the s &P. Okay. So, not in the S&P, but what do I do? Oh. There we go. Pins. Pins. pins they're on pins and needles today, man. man. They, they're getting pinned out here today. So they're down, down about 20% almost. Yeah. Haircut overnight, man. 52-week low. What was the issue? Can we just jump around before yeah. we... 19 bucks back in April, um, and we're sitting in 1957. But April we... of this year, too. Yeah, no, we, we put it on... Um, yeah, the chart. It's another it, one that it, didn't trade there, right? It never traded there because right. there's your April. Never traded there. Jumped higher. What was that twenty eight dollars? Twenty nine, thirty bucks on day one. Yeah. Made it up to as high as thirty six dollars just back in August, and the news on them, um, not good as you may imagine. Weak outlook disappoints. Let's see what we got going on here. 
So they're plunged on Friday after the social media company's re revenue miss disappointed analysts and prop prompted several price target cuts as the reality hit that the recently listed company is still in the early days of making money from its platform. The results show that Pinterest is still building the plumbing around several key initiatives. That means spending money, right? Oh, yeah. Um, adding that they had been hoping for more from the company. At least one analyst downgraded the stock in the wake of the results. Um, let's see. Shares fell as much as 25%. They got the real numbers in here. Let's see what we got. Nah, this is going to be all the analyst talk. Hold on. Let's back this up one and see if the next article gives us a full breakdown of the news. So revenue was $279 million, below the 282. Let's see. So the San Francisco-based company added 22 million users in the third quarter. Got to be tough to be a public company, man. You had 22 million users in 90 days, and the market's like, ba boom, we're going I lower. Know. Yeah, there's, um, there's, it's a whole different animal. They got 322 million users overall. That surpassed the 310 monthly average users expected. Um, but let's see. And this is the big deal here. I heard this. So 73% of the total is now outside of the U.S. I heard one analyst saying that they are growing in areas that are not lucrative okay Oof. that okay. that was one of the summations right. that i heard um the company said the user gains were driven by double digit growth in nearly all international countries um americans love to spend cashola man we know that so maybe that's kind of the tough thing um domestic users brought in 293 each in the recent period while each international you wow look at that there that's you go sick. 13 cents so is 293 much bigger than 13 cents? Oh I, I haven't studied math in a while. Um, just 2 million of Pinterest, 22 million users in the quarter were in the U.S. And that's, that's the problem. There wow. you go. So that sums it up. 13 cents to 293. Yeah. yeah. Yep. There you go. Wow. That is something else. That's a scary notion if you're a, a buyer there. And, you know, I'm not on Pinterest. I know many people love it. It seems to be... Uh, more suited, it's like the females, I think. That's just my grow. You know, yeah. it's a, a board so it's, it's that they... A, a Nazi... I believe right? so, you, yeah. You make things, right? Yeah, and I believe... You, well, yeah, yeah, you can pin things, though. You don't have to make things, oh. I believe. We should get a, a, a okay. Pinterest expert on here, because we're chatting about it, not really. Um, but nonetheless, man, it looks like there's not a lot of experts coming from the U.S. on there, that's for sure. That's for sure. Let's go take a look at the yen. So, you know, the yen got hit yesterday, and the, and the Nikkei actually didn't get hit that bad when I was looking at it. Um, you know, the yen still wants a lower price, which is stronger yen. Uh, you know, we that last two days, we, we didn't get over that price point of 109.32, thank God, because if you're a bull in the metals market, you don't want to see that uh, yen get weak. Um, that being said, now watch this. This gets interesting. So I think we're going to have some kind of a leg effect here. But the Nikkei last night was down, but not as down, not as down as much as it could have been, man. I mean, you know, it got... Where it, it ended up only down 76 points, 22,850. It had traded down an additional 150 points. But that's still not bad compared to how strong that yen got. So Yeah, can I just take know. a look from high to low? Let's see. So what did it close at on that day? 22,927 and opened at 22,730. So almost a full percent. Yeah. But, uh, you know. Yeah. Yeah. The, uh, but I don't you mean it was a huge day for the yen, so it could have been worse. Oh. Yeah, and the fact that it paired a lot of those losses too. Yeah, totally. So the pound, I mean, we're going to be, uh, it's it's going to be really intriguing watching how this thing shakes out. Pretty cool. We can now say we get an election next month in yeah. December. It is November. We and, get a new election next month. And this morning, well, watch this one. Let's see if I can find this thing. So Neil Farage, and that's he's the leader of the Brexit party. Um, he is saying that uh, he wanted a... You're already back two days. Yeah. yeah, so let me put it this way. He is saying that uh, with Johnson, he wanted Johnson to can what he was, the platform that's up there now. He's saying, he was saying that that's just a Theresa May deal decorated a little. Okay. Um, and what he's saying is that if he doesn't do it, then he's going to run against that party he's gonna have his party run against that party in so many um counties okay and supposedly you know if if that's the case the bottom line is that they'll have, they'll we'll have, have a problem yeah yeah, you know? yeah. so there's going to be a lot of twists and turns yeah. on this there's, you know in in each party over there you have um battles going on just like you do over here man you know in terms of democrats what they want in terms of republicans you got hardcore far right far left yeah. um that's a little bit of that mix going on over there i imagine but what's this one plain loads of cash from russia let's see hundreds of millions of dollars of cash has been shipped from russia to venezuela providing a lifeline to the south american company uh 
Finish that sentence. Wonder, As U.S. sanctions limit access yeah. to the global financial system, Russia supporting our foes. That's a shocker. No, go right. ahead. So a total of 315 million and U.S. dollar and euro notes were sent in six separate shipments from Moscow to Caracas from May 18 to May April, of, May according of eight, to May data of, reviewed by Bloomberg from yeah. Import Genius. I wonder. So was, May of last year to April this year. Yeah. Um, yeah. What's so weird about that is that it's like okay, this is a public record. This was reviewed by Bloomberg and Input Genius, which compiled Russian custom records that obtained through private sources. The cash came from lenders run by the country's governments and went to Venezuela Development Bank. Yeah, I, I don't know if it says that that's public, though. It's private sources um, through customs records, but private sources, I'm not sure what that exactly Pretty wild. Oh, I, I imagine Russia's not happy that story's out there today. So they didn't think that that might be public. Maybe they just don't care, man. Yeah. They didn't. Seem, they don't seem to be being held accountable not, for much these days. They're not so. worried about exactly. anything right now. Dow. Dow right now up 228. Nasdaq is up 75. S&P is up 23. We have gold flat. Silver also flat. King dollar. King dollar down 128 ticks. Notes and bonds down uh, three ticks to 10. 13 to 30. Come right back. Hi folks, Tom O'Brien here. If you'd like to get my daily newsletter, Market Insights, then now is a great time to sign up for a 30-day free trial. Every morning by 9.30, I send out my morning letter to subscribers with market commentary on a variety of markets, currencies, and commodities to keep investors up to date on the day's trading action. Included in Market Insights are specific buy and sell recommendations for stocks, ETFs, and even options, with stops and price targets included for every trade in my newsletter. If you'd like to try my newsletter risk-free for 30 days, then head over to the front page of TFNN and you'll find Market Insights under Trading Newsletters. I use my years of trading experience to bisect and dissect the market every morning and give my subscribers the most important information they need to know for the day ahead. I even issue afternoon updates for my subscribers whenever warranted with important market action. I'm always scouring the market for the next great trading opportunity. Sign up for your 30-day free trial to my daily newsletter, Market Insights, today by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Wow! Go get them, folks! The Path of Least Resistance is David White's daily trading newsletter, and if you're looking for active trading ideas, then now's a perfect time for a 30-day free trial to this powerful daily trading advisory service. David uses his years of trading experience to offer his subscribers his trading ideas each morning in his Path of Least Resistance newsletter. Using a combination of equity trades along with options, David keeps his subscribers up to date with all pertinent market information with intraday afternoon updates when warranted. Don't miss out on this great chance to get a 30-day free trial to David's daily newsletter, The Path of Least Resistance, with no obligation to pay anything. David has been delivering solid recommendations for his subscribers recently, and if you'd like to see the type of newsletter he delivers every morning, then visit the front page of TFNN, and you'll find The Path of Least Resistance under Trading Newsletters. For all the details, and to start your 30-day free trial today, log on to TFNN.com now. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. Dow is up to 233, Nasdaq's up 74, S&Ps are up 23. And if we go back to Britain for a second, uh, you're going to see this is kind of wild how this can work. Politics uh, is pretty wild right now across the board, right? Yeah. But it is. 
So this is the article you were talking about, I guess, and it's yes. talking about that Nigel Farage, who is the Brexit Party leader, threatened to fight for every seat in the December 12th election if Prime Minister Boris Johnson refuses to abandon his divorce deal with the EU and commit to a clean break. So you got Nigel Farage, the farest of the far, right, you could call it over there, yeah. wants just a clean break. Um, and so what this really speaks to is that you have many candidates over there. So you have multiple conservative candidates running for the same seat and to sum things up it goes down further in here is that uh, there's concerns among conservative activists that the brexit party will split the anti-eu vote in some parts of the country costing them seats they could otherwise win so you got you know a farage candidate you got a boris johnson candidate and then you have the jeremy corbyn candidate and even if the conservatives have 60 percent of the vote they might split between kind of the staunch Farage, the more middle of the road, maybe call it Boris, and allowing the Corbyn. So Farage is playing hardball. He wants to agree to a non-aggression pact with Johnson in which conservative candidates would stand down in seats where his party is well-placed to beat Jeremy Corbyn's labor. Lots going on over there, man. Uh, there are 150 seats in the county that uh, labor held constituencies that the Conservative Party have never, ever won in their history, Farad said. The only way to solve this is to build a leave alliance across the country. And then uh, his view matters. The Brexit Party topped the polls with 32% of the vote in the EU Parliament elections Ooh, in May. And while it is unlikely to win many seats under Britain's first past the post electoral ne system next month, Farage is looking to cash in on its power as a disruptive force. Man, yeah. it's going to be coming down the line. December 12th. December 12th. When? Yeah, I mean, we've been doing this now for quite some time. No, wasn't it? We're in November. It was supposed to be Brexit October 31st, yeah. I thought. Right. Yeah, yeah. exactly. No, no, Pretty no, remarkable. No, no. Let's go take a look at the financials. XLF, well, I believe, uh, let me, the Berkshire Hathaway, BRK. I think, did Berkshire just come up with numbers? I believe they did. They had a little woes, I think, I saw up there. Okay, oh, they're so, flat. Okay. Uh, oh, no, November 2nd. Okay. Oh, okay, yes. Right. You're right. Yep. Uh, November 2nd. So. Wait a second. That's Berkshire. tomorrow at 8 a.m. What's going on here? Oh, that means. Oh, Let's no, get... that's right. That's what he does. Maybe that's the. I wonder if that's the. Yeah, yeah, okay. Yeah. That's. Let's... You know what? I did. Uh, that is the headline I was thinking of. Why not click on that top one? Underperformance splits investors ahead of earnings. Let's see. So, Berkshire Hathaway's rotation of investors over the past few months. Point past few months points to the question lingering over the conglomerate as it heads for the worst annual underperformance since 2009. Is it worth waiting for Warren Buffett to make a dent into his record? Is that a big number? $122 billion cash. in cash. Yeah. So Ackman's, Bill Ackman piled in, David Rolfe exited. So Ackman's stake in Berkshire disclosed in August is a bullish bet. His idea is simple. Growth at Berkshire's underlying business and the company's competitive system will boost earnings even if the fund funds aren't deployed. Rolf, whose firm had been a Berkshire investor for decades, grew tired of waiting. Interesting. Wow. I mean, you know, if you're in the market, you follow him. Buffett, the king of coming in when people really need capital right. in a period of distress. We're not in a period of distress, man. No. You can't find those types of deals no. right now. If anything, people are overpaying. Yeah. So here, I'll put this up. This is all the 13F filings. I'm just going to do the largest buys first. So you get, there's oh, this, Pershing. There's Ackerman right yep. there. Look Coming in. That. He came in 3.5 million shares. Yeah, and you're at a $200 stock, right? So yeah. 3.5 million, that'd be 35 million if it's 10 bucks. That's 350 million if it's a $100 stock. That's 700, yeah. so 750 million, $800 million position, something like that. And then let's go into the sell. Oh, that's interesting. So Capital Group, this is a this is a big fund out in California. They that's it's like a fidelity. Okay. Um they sold some of their position. They still they sold three point nine well, is that yeah, it's June June thirtieth. I could have said I mean maybe I'm not sure who Rolf runs. Maybe it could have been because this is a, a fund liquidated completely yes. of one point six or right. even seven hundred and fifty, both of those Royal London asset yeah. uh that's going to zero. Yeah, so it's, you get the yin and yang there. It's All right, not, some Saturday morning earnings yeah. for those fiends out there looking for action on Saturday morning. You can't trade it on Saturday morning. That's how smart Buffett actually is, folks, okay? Because the bottom line is that uh, what is so intriguing to me is that, you know, some of these companies will do their earnings like two or three hours after the market's sure, closed, right? Sure. I think it's really smart, you know, because it's like, you know, you do it right away, 
you know, people are going to trade it. And, you know, sometimes, yeah, you can go up 20 bucks, but you can get down 20 bucks. And yeah. then if they have more time to think about it, you know. Yeah, um, calmer minds prevail. It, a little bit less impulsiveness yeah. when you have that. Let's go take a look at that silver market. So we get Friday. Your bottom line is already rejected. Well, look at that silver didn't even move lower. Yeah, well, that's we is that going to be the intraday? When when is that? Do we get the full move on that? Yeah, we do. Okay. Yeah. So you get eighteen oh seven. You get fifty two thousand contracts, and uh, that's saying what's higher price too. And what did happen last night, folks, is that inside the GDX, this volume came in. Uh, now the GDX is always intriguing because they put so much volume in at the close. And look what they did. So right, I'm on the air, right? And 59 million is what you needed. And like 10 minutes coming into it, I said, I don't think we're going to make it, man, because it was like at 49 million or something. End of the month, man. And, end, of the, end of the month. And you look, know? look at this. Yeah. 79 million. Sure. 2818, you're going into 2817, and you took it out. Yeah. So yeah. that's saying also that we have more buyers and sellers uh, inside that market, which is pretty cool. Yeah. Um, there's no doubt. McDonald's, uh, what, what's a Big Mac? They not buying enough Big Macs. They got a good deal going out there. But I think it's buy one Big Mac, get the next one for a dollar. Just watch your cholesterol and your salt take on you know that. What? I haven't, when's the last time I had a Big Mac? Uh, remember, I was telling you about where I was out and somebody got a Big Mac, and I got yeah. and I ah they got a, they got a deal. Buy one, get one for a dollar. I'll have a get, you know what, make it two, make I, it two. I and could, I had one so a couple I, months ago. I could go for one right now. And the way they were getting it, which was delicious, man. I think they held the lettuce. Which the lettuce yeah. is fine, I, and extra special sauce. I, I definitely want the extra special and sauce. And that's the With best those pickles. And the best way to, um, and then you know it's a fresh one made. Whenever you, oh so, yeah, that's, yeah, you right. know they got to make it fresh. It can't be. And I think they do so much business. You, you're always getting, yeah. I don't know, giving McDonald's a little yeah. bit of benefit of the doubt. But when you, uh, a tip big, to tip to the, the big, wise. Did the Big Mac have? Two burgers on it or just one? Two patties. Two Come patties. on. Yeah. That's their ad, man. I know. I just haven't had it. Two patties, long. special sauce, pickles, lettuce, onions, yeah. right? I mean, I almost yeah. have it in my head without trying. My that's good advertising okay, for that's them. That's where we're going. <laughs> there we go. Right. Good Friday Big Mac. It's all. <laughs> the sodium, though, I'm serious, folks. If you're worried about sodium, it is off the charts in, in most processed foods. So yeah. be careful out there because I think you one Big Mac, it almost has enough sodium for your daily intake, let alone there's sodium in everything. So beware of that for sure. Processed foods, the sodium take is just off the charts. Yeah, there's no doubt. J.P. Morgan. Let's go take a look at J.P. Morgan. I mean, the bottom line is that the Fed's saying they're done for a bit. Um, J.P. Morgan up two bucks. And um, this baby here, I think this is at all-time highs, too. Let's see, Not I bad. I can just do it this way. Living the life. Oh, interesting, though. 90... Oh, yeah, 127.42. What was yeah. that? All-time high two days ago. Well, is that, yeah, that's going to be the high for the 52-week, right? Yeah. yeah. Stay right there, folks. Tommy and I come right back. If you're in the CD market and looking for a secure investment, the Tiger First Mortgage Program may work for you. The security for these first mortgages are building lots in the Tax Opportunity Zone in St. Petersburg, Florida. The Tax Act of 2018 set up tax-free zones across the country where you can build and hold for 10 years and pay no tax on the profits, which makes these lots valuable. The investment is anywhere from $30,000 to $75,000. The interest paid is 7% yearly paid on a monthly basis. According to Bankrate.com, the best rate for a four-year CD in the country as of February 20th is 3.1%. A $50,000 investment at a normal four-year CD rate of 3.1% would give you income of $1,550 per year or $6,200 over the four-year period. That same $50,000 investment in the Tiger First Mortgage Program would give you $3,500 per year or $14,000 over the four years. Which would you prefer, $6,200 or $14,000 of interest on your investment? If you'd like more information about the Tiger First Mortgage Program, you can call me at 877-518-9190. That's 877-518-9190. If you haven't checked out the newsletters page of TFNN.com, what are you waiting for? All of the TFNN newsletters are informative, up-to-date, affordable, and a must-have for every trader looking to gain a competitive informational edge in today's markets. TFNN newsletters cover every aspect of the markets to offer you the very latest in market news. Plus, new subscribers get to test drive our newsletters risk-free for 30 days. From all aspects of the markets, including stocks, bonds, metals, commodities, and tech, there's a newsletter to fit your needs exclusively from TFNN. 
Stay informed each day you trade and get that competitive edge that will help you stay ahead of the game. Visit our newsletters page by going to TFNN.com and click the newsletters button near the top of the page. TFNN.com, educating investors. Biotech is booming, but for how long? Whether you think the biotech bull has room to run or has run its course, trade LABU or LABD. Direction's daily S&P Biotech three times bull and bear ETFs. Visit directioninvestments.com slash biotech today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor for Side Fund Services, LLC. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV for the latest market information. Welcome back, folks, in uh, California. I mean, uh, I'm sure that they're wanting this cal calendar to move forward so this wildfire season is getting over. Man, but I don't know how the rain works out there, today. if it even is even possible, but that would be nice, man, because it's just day after day. New California blazer up says wildfire season refuses to let go. Southern California battling yet another wildfire, which has spurred a new round of deliberate blackouts by Edison International and mandatory evacuations. Edison cut power supplies to 950 Ventura County homes and businesses after restoring power to more than 87,000 customers in the last two days. The new blaze named Maria comes as the state is starting to recover from wild, a wildfire season that's disrupted the lives of millions of residents Maria began at around 6 p.m. yesterday, just north of Los Angeles, and now covers about 8,000 acres, according to the Ventura County Fire Department. Look at this picture, man. Yeah, the, the pictures are stunning, man. I'm not sure if you saw any of the pictures. Maybe we'll try and pull it up at the next break. Um, the Reagan Library out there, um, I, an amazing facility. Yeah. They had a Republican debate out there in 2016 stunning windows and you look outside the windows man and there's fires raging everywhere and hopefully it survives it i'm not sure the to topography of how that works but the it's just countless man you, you know the yeah. pictures next to the highways we talked about it is okay so i see so this they got a long way to go are they saying the, the new outbreak shows the wildfire season which runs through december okay december it's november yeah. 1st yeah, oh. remains a challenge, even as fierce winds that have ravaged the state for several days have eased. And there you go, no rain in the forecast for at least the next week. That would be the, the biggest reprieve, right? You finally get some rain. Yeah, Salt um, the place. Yeah. It is winding down out there, but there continues to be very dry conditions, says a meteorologist with AccuWeather. Unfortunately, it remains very dry, so they are not getting a break as far as it goes. And um, Yeah. And how is you PCG? Let's see how they're trading today yeah i mean it's up or down 20 percent right? it, it seems like that it should all be priced in at this point and then but nonetheless i mean if it persists above expectation six dollars 44 cents who yeah. knows if they'll be around to yeah and now you get the high volume low laying out at 355 yeah before folks when we had the high volume low play laying out at it was five. Oh, I think, oh, yeah, I bring it gonna, back. It was yeah. five dollars and eighty-five you had, cents or something. No, no, okay, that's a little far back, but yeah, five oh seven. Yeah. So we'll see. Uh, let's get, well, you know, it's interesting here on a monthly. That could have been the test. That's weird. this would be weird, but I wouldn't be buying PG and E. I know. I was about I'm to be PG. like, can yeah. you finish that with a little yeah. caution before you say yeah. that's the the the, the test. <laughs> that's not even close. Yeah. Right? Yeah. You know, there's no doubt about that because. Uh, yeah, you're going against Mother Nature 
And uh, guess what? You know, even the, there's a couple articles actually about the CEO. He can, you know, have the best skill sets out there as a CEO. But the reality is that guess what, man? Mother Nature is bigger than anything. If you know, so I agree. It's, there's, it's coming at you. There's your, some you know. unmanageable situations, and I don't know who the CEO is. I don't know how long they've been in there for yeah. because you know there could be some blame if you've been in there for a while. But no, he's he's only been in there like about a year. He, but he ran the Tennessee Valley Authority for like 25 years. Okay, you know, so yeah, it, he's run a big. Huge yes, companies. sure. But, but the reality is, is that no, it may be untenable for sure. Yeah. So they're asking about the VIX, quite a number, man. So that low going back to where is that? Yeah, about April 1103. And as we reach all time highs, man, 1230 right now on the VIX, drilling this down to a little bit of a 15 minute because you saw some volatility yesterday, almost getting to 14. And then just like that, man, we're back down to almost $12 on the VIX. Yeah, it would make sense. All time uh, highs. Uh, totally. All time uh, highs. But, uh, Totally. We'll see what happens. We'll see what happens. It's, uh, we're now in November. Let me say it. We're now 12 months out from a presidential election, man. T November of 2020. Wow. And it's going to be remarkable how that kind of volatility. The market does not like uncertainty, right? And no matter who Democrats come with, there is going to be uncertainty. I don't know what's going to happen in the election, but nobody does. And uh, there's a stark contrast between the Democrats and the Republicans. And I, I, I wonder how the market's going to handle that contrast coming up to Election Day. Yeah. Because I would be hard pressed to see it chugging higher, higher, higher just with uncertainty. You know, uncertainty the market does not like. And, and uh, we're, it's going to be coming quick, man, coming quick. And the kicker here, folks, is that the note and bond market still wants higher price, lower yield. So... It's like, okay, where are you going with that? Um, you know, the Fed said that, okay, they're basically done for a bit. Um, that being said, the market is saying, hey, we're going to buy notes and bonds uh, hand over fist. And that means uh, lower prices are coming at us. If we do look in the world, you're going to see that we're still really high compared to 1.71 uh, right now. France is still in negative. And this is on the 10 years. France is still in negative. Germany is still in negative. You know, Sweden, the Netherlands, Switzerland. Switzerland's been a negative forever. Uh, half, half a percent. Let me have $100,000. Hold it for 10 years, and I'm going to charge you a half a percent. <laughs> uh, I know, and I'll give you back less than $100,000. Yeah, yeah. And that's, that's real. And that's, uh, no one has quite figured out how that even works, folks, okay? But the bottom line is that it is what it is. That is true. It's yeah. a reality we find ourselves in. We go take a look at the uh, X oh, uh, oil. Let's go take a look at that oil market. So oil's active contract. There we go. Okay, so we take a look at oil. You're up a buck fifty five twenty three out here. So yesterday, this is still saying what's lower price. We we came down a volume yesterday. Yeah, look at this. So we came down yesterday with 677,000 contracts. You're up today on 243. Yeah, I mean, the oil market really reacts to those trade concerns. Oh, yeah. That's a big part yesterday. You really yeah. get a pullback on the, the China, U.S., uh, no deal coming trade concerns. That's going to hit the worldwide economy. That's going to hit the oil market. And you saw that yesterday. And if we take this and you put this on a continuous basis, you're going to see that we've been in this consolidation for quite some time. And the, the oil companies themselves... Uh, they're having a hard time getting any traction whatsoever. And the thing is, wow, well, at, at 55 bucks, that's not bad, man. I mean, we can go all the way back. Well, it's not, yeah, it's December of 2014. You know? I guess. You call that consolidation. What did we make well, it down to? Just, I mean, we made know, it down to $27, and we made it up to 20, 80 26 just, 76 <laughs> That's quite a consolidation. 42 Yeah. You know, when, when you... When I you, know what you're saying, but this, I mean, going down to 25 up to 80 there's some volatility. I'd really put it almost since uh, that beginning of 2019. Kind Look at of this, thing. 147. Well, that's a and different 08. time in the world, yeah. 147 to 08, and then six months later, $32. Yep, and then we made it all the way that, back 100. That is oil wildcat stories. That's why they're. Rich people in the oil business and poor people in the oil business. And the world was a different place, man. I don't think Tesla was selling cars back then. Um, you yeah. know, as in there's a lot more pressure on the price of oil right now. We, as the U.S., we produce a lot more oil domestically. Oh, yeah. And we have a lot more alternative energy sources available. So keep that in mind when you look at that chart in 2009 and you say, ah, it was down at 32. We made it back above 100. Doesn't necessarily mean in a changing 
face. Yeah. And look at Tesla. So June of 2019, it's 176 and it's 312. Yeah, hey, they're making money now, man. It's a big number. It is. Big number. So, yeah, folks, Tommy and I are coming right back. Dow. Dow Industrials right now trading up. Uh, it was called record highs, man. Two, Not in the Dow yet, but everywhere. 238. S&P's up 22. NASDAQ up 71. Come right back. I'm certain you are or strive to be one of the best of the best at everything you do in life. It's the most common trait that we tigers and tigresses share. If you're looking to become the best of the best when it comes to managing your money, let me teach you to do what most wealth managers tell you can't be done, which is how to time the markets. I'm Steve Rhodes, author of Mastering Probability, and for the last 12 months, Timer Digest has been tracking my newsletter signals, which have earned me the ranking as their number one market timer in the nation for the S&P 500 for the last 12 12, 6, and 3 months. Timer Digest also ranks me as the number one market timer for gold as well. The fact is, markets can be timed, and I'll teach you the exact set of tools that I use that has transformed me into one of the best at what I do. Sign up for Mastering Probability today by clicking on the newsletter tab on the homepage of tfnn.com and get immediate access to workshops where I take you step by step how to use an extraordinary set of tools as well as provide great market calls too. Sign up today. If you're a trader in the market looking for exposure to gold or gold mining equities, then now is a perfect time to sign up for Tom O'Brien's Gold Report. The summer is over, gold is trading back above $1,500, and the 10-year treasury is hovering at around 1.5%. Tom O'Brien has been writing his weekly gold report for almost 18 years. There's no one that knows more about how the gold market trades and how gold mining equities react. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to lose. Every Monday morning, Tom publishes his weekly gold report with coverage of gold, silver, bonds, the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, as well as more than 30 different mining equities. As of September 3rd, Gold Report subscribers have five active open positions with an average unrealized profit of almost 38% for each position. To see for yourself the types of profitable trades that are recommended within the Gold Report, sign up today by visiting TFNN.com. Since 1984, Basil Chapman has been using the Chapman Wave methodology to advise traders of his expert market opinion. While originally hand-drawing charts from the late 1970s into the 1980s, Basil noticed that prices under most circumstances virtually always had a certain number of legs to the upside before declining sharply. Later, Basil found that computer software, which included the standard market technical indicators, enhanced the degree of accuracy in calling price turns, as well as market trend calls. Thus was born the Chapman Wave sequence. Using the Chapman Wave methodology along with other indicators, Basil Chapman advises his subscribers of his expert market opinion each market day with his opening call newsletter. Right now, you can get a two-week free trial to the opening call, Basil's daily trading newsletter, by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Cancel at any time during that trial and pay absolutely nothing. Get your two-week free trial to Basil's newsletter, The Opening Call, today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. And as you come over to our website at TFNN, folks, you're going to see our man, Mr. Basil Chapman. He's going to be doing a webinar for his subscribers. It's going to be on November 19th. That's a Tuesday from 5 to 6.30. And guess what, folks? Okay, uh, when you see this webinar, the bottom line, we are talking about 2020. Remarkable, right? We'll yeah. be there in no time, man. Less than two months left in the year. November 1st today, this subscriber webinar, November 19th. <coughs> Excuse me, that's two weeks from this coming Tuesday. I encourage people to get in there, sign up for the opening call. Basil does a great service, updates every single day. He at least puts out an update Saturday or Sunday along with the Monday morning. So great time to sign up Friday. Don't think you're missing out by signing up Friday. Wait till Monday, get in there ahead of the weekend update. You'll gain access to all the archives today. And you also gain access to a number of archives in here. So he's got five separate archives. A lot of those 90 minutes nice. long. You can take some time this weekend, check out what he's been talking about, whether it was his uh, webinar he did for subscribers in August, 
June. He talks about, you know, the Chapman Wave tools that helped identify the market's last top and what to expect as we go into the new year. Uh, and he's doing that again. He's looking at, you know, he's like, look at this first one. This is pretty cool. So the first one he had done August 21st, folks, and what it was, what stocks can lead the market higher after this correction is completed? <laughs> I'd say that correction completed. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. And uh, he said, you know, he's got some great picks in there already. 15 to 30 percent intra-year winners and by request from current subscribers. Basil's put together this webinar. He's going to review many of the Chapman Wave techniques that helped in their successful analysis. That includes the rhythm of price movement in all time frames, the practical application of moving averages, arc and cup, and the CW. And he's also going to be talking about the stocks and sectors of importance going into 2020. Check it out on the front page of TFNN.com. Folks, stay right there. We've got Think and Swim coming up next. And we got our man, Mr. Basil Chapman, Steve Rhodes, Steve White. Right. I'll be back this afternoon. Thanks, pal. Thanks, man. Oh, Go get him, folks.